lot, like you mentioned, it's a lot in the beliefs, you know, uh, how well you believe it. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with it. However, with that said, there's always some kind of truth in, and uh, meat and potatoes to anything. So, yeah, I believe there's some stuff out there that you got to be careful with. Yeah, that would really, you know, scare me. Seriously. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess it would. Let me ask you this. Have you eaten uh, any strawberry pie lately? No, I, I do. Well, I haven't eaten. I can't because, you know what? Ever since my injury, guess what? Mm-hmm. I don't really care for that. I've, I think I've had three bowls of ice cream in the last uh, three months. I don't, you know, I just... I don't eat much anymore. I have my stomach, it's, I'm, I'm losing weight, and you know, I just don't have the appetite. So that stuff don't interest me anymore. Well, that's good. I, look, I'm proud of you. You lost a lot of weight, and you're eating healthy. You're, you're exercising. You're probably in better shape now than you have been in the last couple of years. Well, at least my arm and shoulder muscles are. I can say that much. <laughs> well, you, it, and you need it to be because, you know, you, you're using your walker to get back where you can start to walk again. So your arms are going to be, you need, they need to be strong. Yeah, but remember, I only can go about eight feet with a walker and then I have to back up and start over again. Yeah, but look at it like this. How far could you go a month ago? I couldn't even get on the walker. Exactly. You're making progress. That's now, I, I, now I know what these 80-year-old and 70-year-old people feel like using a walker. I. Uh, you know, God, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. They're, they're no. not safe. You know that. Walkers are unsafe. No, because uh, didn't you catch it on the rug and, and take another fall and hurt yourself worse? Isn't that what happened? I would have been walking, uh, you know, a month and a half ago. If that, yeah. My wife went out and bought me a walker after the initial, uh, initial fall to make it easier for me to get around. And it caught the darn car- uh, carpet. And that's when I tore out that, what's that called? The A something? A- uh, ACL. Yeah, I tore it, and you know, and uh, and I looked at my knee cap at a forty-five degree angle, and the firemen were there, and they they came and they go, oh my god, I never seen a knee break like that before. Ah, what can I say? <laughs> that, that you always like to hear that from paramedics. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you're, I, I tell you, you're, oh my, god. there I was, there I was, right, with a sprained ankle, a sprained other leg on the other side my kneecap that a whatever it is torn right uh then uh uh my sciatic nerve was like on fire a lower Ooh. sprain uh, back and an upper sprain back hey not bad deal huh oh my that that's enough injuries for a lifetime good golly and and, and you know for you to to and and what people don't realize with those kind of injuries if you're bedridden, it really works on your mind. It, it really, it gets depressing. It works on you. Well, you know what? Because you, you, you can't get comfortable. You're, you're taking pain pills like you're popping them like nothing. You know, the first couple of days you take one pain pill, the pain kind of goes away or gets a little numb. But then after a while, you have to increase the dosage because it doesn't work as good. You can't lay on your left side. You can't lay on your right side. You can't lay on your back. You can't lay on your stomach. You lay at a like a, a fetal position. That's what I had to do. And it was horrible. And and, and, yeah. and I had to lay in the bed. My, I, I feel so sorry for my wife. I had to lay at a 45-degree angle. Yeah, that sciatic nerve is the worst. You can't, no matter what you do, you can't get comfortable and it's just miserable. You can't get good sleep. It's just all terrible. And, and you know what? I felt it, the sciatic nerve. I always, ha- I, you know, I've had problems with my sciatic nerve. But this one, I, I could feel like like a pop and a burn, pop and a burn, pop and a burn, run across the whole bottom of my back, running straight across. And it was like each one was like on fire. Yeah, across your lumbar and around the peritoneal, probably. Yeah, that's and down your le- down your leg and and oh yeah, those are bad. Oh yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm past that stage now. The problem is I couldn't really sleep, so I went uh, for two months virtually not eating. Uh, then that caused me to you know start throwing up. So they had to give me medicine to keep me from throwing up. But then I had no appetite. I, I was really getting sick because I couldn't even hold it any liquid down. And that went on for like three weeks. And I went three weeks. I actually went two weeks without eating anything. 
didn't I touch remember, anything. I remember. I was worried to death about you. I was like, man, you got to get some kind of food broth or something. At least keep the fluids going anyway. Yeah, and I, I, I think I went about four or five days at a time without even drinking because anything I drank, I got nauseated and I threw up. So I, I don't wish that upon anybody. So I am making recovery. I, I am probably right now, if we got a race with some other people that are, I classify myself right now disabled, hopefully it won't last much longer. But if you got a race of office chairs, I'll beat anybody because I can zoom through this whole house into my studio probably faster than somebody could run at their top speed. See there? that Now, look, see how you mastered that? And you keep, you're going to keep on progressing. And you know what? Before you know it, you're going to be walking and then you're going to be skipping. That's right. Skipping. <laughs> well, I didn't skip since I was in junior high school and high school. I skipped a lot then. Uh, yeah, I bet. That poor one teacher. Matter of fact, speaking of curses, remember that one with your teacher? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, oh, yeah. I, you know what? I, my best routine I ever had was in high school. I was dating the principal's daughter. Oh, Lord. Okay, which he hated me with a passion. And any time... What? Well, she she hated you and you dated her? I, no, he hated me. The principal oh, okay. hated me because I was dating his daughter. Oh, God. You know, and it was horrible. And I, you know, I, they would take me into the office, and I had this routine. You know what, it, what I did? I said, you know, I, I'm going to quit school. <laughs> now, they were going to suspend me, but I used the magic word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit school. That freaked out the concerts, right? Oh, you don't want to quit school. The next thing I know, I didn't get suspended. And that worked for a couple years. Boy, you really like to dance with the devil sometimes there, don't you, buddy? <laughs> well, what can I say? <laughs> My, the, dating, the, let's see, dating the principal's uh, daughter. Uh, your first wife was into all kind of craziness. And oh, yeah. married you married your second wife twice within a few days. No, or, it was, no, it was, uh, I married her. And then we went like two months, and then I married her oh. again. Oh, okay. Well, that makes a big difference. <laughs> Boy, I feel for you, Gary. I do. Never had sex with her either. What? You no. didn't consummate it? No. Well, that's grounds for annulment, right? Th- that, there. That's right. That, yeah. That, does that was that was that what you used for the uh, annulment? Yeah, seriously, we didn't. You know, we didn't do anything. We didn't sleep together. She was yeah, a, because, she was a devout Catholic. She didn't believe in sex before marriage. Well, I guess she didn't believe in it after marriage either. Well, I don't know. I I, I didn't. I, I just lost. <laughs> as soon as the, the 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 words "I do" came out of my mouth, I go, "Oh, what did I do? What did I do?" Oh, my goodness. You, you, you have to imagine, my first marriage was like living in hell. Maybe the gypsies put a curse on me because it was horrible. I was just thinking that. Maybe it was a curse where you couldn't stop yourself from saying, I do. No, I don't know. I just It scared <laughs> me about marriage because, I tell you, living the life of paranormal and witchcraft and the occult, I couldn't handle that. That I'm was real. two and a half years of my life. That I had to put up with it. Yeah, then didn't you uh, come across from South Carolina into the desert and had that experience with uh, some kind of light, maybe a UFO too? On top yeah, of all that? I'm hoping they abducted her. And then they they probably you know put her back in the car and said, "Hey, we're not we're not even going to waste our time with that person." We're, we're not bringing we're not keeping her on board here very long. She's got to go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I, what we're going to do is I'm going to call up our guest here, Paul Roberts. We're going to be talking about Area 51. Maybe you might want to hang on for about a half an hour and we can, you know, qu- quiz him about Area 51. Sounds like a plan, Gary. So anyway, you're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. Again, if you wondered what happened to us, is we had a equipment meltdown. What can I say? I mean, you know, things happen. Just don't put keys on top of a server case next to a fan and then let it drop down through. Don't do that because things kind of like smoke. Yeah, metal and electricity don't get along too well. Okay. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark with Gary. We'll be right back right after this in about two and a half minutes. So run and go. You get yourself a cup of Java, a, a, a brown one or a glass of tea or a soda. We'll be right back.
Advertise your business on Night Dreams Talk Radio and you will be heard worldwide. Why not contact us at Night Dreams Talk Radio at gmail.com? Coming to you from some far point station, like a cosmic tumbleweed, both north and south of the Pleiades, here's your host, Gary Anderson. That is me. We're getting ready now to call Paul Roberts. We're going to talk about Area 51. Hopefully, this works here tonight. Let's see what happens. Hello? Well, I'm looking for Paul. Hey, how's it going, Doug? Yeah, well, considering I had a meltdown with my mixer the other day, and it caught on fire, tonight, one of my well, older children decided in my server case to hide a set of keys up there for case, you know, they ever need it. Uh, it won't get lost. Well, it fell right. in through the fan, dropped into the, one of the servers. That started smoking. Ah, we were about 18 minutes late getting on the air. Oh, 